Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll look at verses 1 through 4. The title of the message is Battlefield, Battlefield, Battlefield. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him, to be a soldier. Brother Matthew, can you pray for the message? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Jesus. We just would like to thank you for another day of life, Lord. We thank you for providing us with a church to call home when we are feeling spiritually drained, Lord God, and we need a little bit more of you, Lord. We thank you for all of your blessings, Lord God, and we thank you for all our trials and tribulations, Lord, because we thank you for chastening us when we don't abide in you, Lord, and I pray that Amen. you would remove all negative influences from our lives, Lord God, so we can continue to live in you, Lord God, and allow you to restore our hearts, Lord, and sanctify our souls, Jesus. Pray that you would bless uh, this church and bless this uh, service and bless the fellowship afterwards, and I pray that you fill us all with the Holy Spirit so that we may receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Battlefield. As you know, there's war going on right now in the world between Ukraine and Russia. However, as Christians, you need to realize that once you get saved, you get enlisted in the army of Christ. You're the infantryman, as with you know, Marines, paratroopers, you are in the you know, army of Jesus Christ. So you're in a constant battle. You are actually in a war. Sometimes you don't recognize it, but you are in a war. You're in a spiritual battle. Physical battle, you know, is constant outside. You know, sometimes if you're in a country where there's war going on, you know, you'll be involved. Like in Ukraine, you know, I, I believe anyone over 18, it started out with between 18 and 60-year-old men. You know, you'll be going to the war, but maybe I think they lift it to every adult male will be going to the war. In a war, you know, it's different. The circumstances are different during the war. All the money in the world is not gonna really help you out, you know. Being in a, in a big house will not help you out. People have lost everything overnight during the war. Think about, you know, people of Ukraine, you know, who one night, they're sleeping on their bed, you know, you know sleeping well, you know, but, Following night, you start hearing gunfire. You hear explosions everywhere. And it's not far, you know, far away things that's happening. It's right next to you. And the buildings are, you know, dropping, surrounding you. You know, so far, 2.6 million people have fled, you know, the country. You know, that's a lot of people, 2.6 million. You know, so far, and about over 575 people have been killed, civilians. Right, about two to four thousand soldiers of Ukraine died, and the Russians, you know, five to six thousand, and up to twelve thousand people have died. So there's casualties in a war. In spiritual battle, you know, if you are not in you know right mind, if you're not sober, you're going to become a casualty in this spiritual war. What happens, you know, when a soldier is not alert, is not sober? When soldier does not realize that they're in a battle, you know, they're going to suffer. Most likely, they're ill-prepared, and they're going to die eventually. As you know, devil will not let you get away with anything. You know, devil is your enemy, right? Sometimes you forget, right, who my real enemy is, right? You know, a lot of times, your real enemy could be people that you see, you think, right? You know, some people that you see, you know, the friends who have turned into your enemies, right? You know, your coworkers, your boss, you know, your, whoever it is, you think they're your enemies, right? 
But in a war, in a spiritual war, your real enemy is the devil. You know, devil is always, you know, roaming around, you know, seeing whom he may devour. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5. So you must recognize that in this war, you need to know who your enemy is. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. However, if you're not saved, you know, devil is not your enemy. Devil is your father. So, so just remember that. And if you don't know what saved means, you know, you really have to get saved, right? You have to get saved from eternal lake of fire, burning in hell forever. So if you don't know where you're going tonight, if you were to die right now, then you definitely have to realize and make sure where you're going and which army you're enlisted in. You're whether in the army of Christ or your army in the devil or Satan. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So you could see the Bible says, be sober. You know, to many Christians, it means wake up, right? You have to wake up. You know, a lot of Christians are just walking like, you know, nothing's, nothing's going on around them. They think everything is just, you know, honky dolly and you think everything's fine. Right? You think, you know, all your life, it's just like how it's going to be, and nothing will change. And when you realize what happened to you know, people of Ukraine, Ukraine, it just happens overnight. In a Christian walk, you have to realize that there's being called devil, right? He's only second in power to Jesus Christ himself, and he's roaming around trying to destroy you. Think about it. You know, one of the chief of all angels, Michael, you know, didn't deal with him because he knew the devil was stronger than him. And this being devil is roaming around like a roaring lion. You know, you know, we see lions, you know, like in a zoo, right? If you've ever been to a zoo, you know, well, what are some of the most popular attractions? You know, they're lions, right? You know, they're giraffes, tigers. Lions, you know, sometimes... You know, we commercialize that so much, people sometimes forget how scary lions are. You know, lions, you know, if you had a, like an eight, eight feet tall, you know, wall, they could just jump over. Eight feet, right? And then they could jump over, catch their prey, say a goat or, you know, something, grab it in their mouth, jump back over. Right? That's why, you know, there's some... Bad stories where teenage kids, you know, playing around with, you know, this was Tiger, and Tiger jumped over, you know, that, <laughs> that space between, you know, where people are, and there's a gap in there, you know, like a pit, jumped over, and then, you know, mauled those kids. So when you think about it, probably that was about 10 feet, you know. And this lion... See, this the devil, right, is roaming around and then trying to destroy you and kill you. If you don't realize that, you know, there's devil which is trying to destroy you, then what's going to happen? You're going to get eaten by it just like that. That's why you fall into many temptations. You fall into a lot of pitfalls in your life. Can you imagine if you did not commit certain sins in the past, how much better you would be as a Christian right now? Because each sin that you commit, you have to pay for it. And that would detour, make you take detour to certain you know, parts of your life. If you had struggles with alcohol, you know, it's going to destroy your body, right? as well as your mental state. Not only that, it would have affected negatively to people around you. 
Then, if you drank in the past and you got saved and you've been sober for a little bit, whether it be a year or two, maybe many years, what do you think devil will try to do? What do you think devil's goal is to destroy you? Punch you in the face? Probably not. You'll fight back. So the devil will try to make circumstances, you know, create an environment where you have opportunity to drink. And if you're not sober, just like the Bible says, if you're not vigilant, if you're not awake, then what's going to happen? You're going to fall. You're weak. I'm weak. As human beings, you're weak. And if you don't rely on the Lord Jesus Christ every minute, if you don't seek his strength in your life, what's going to happen when that devil, when Satan, you know, finds and waits, right? You know, those predators, right? You know, lion, tiger, you know, they're very patient. You know, if you see puma or like jaguar, they're very patient. They stay in one spot until they see the perfect opportunity. But with devil, you know, he'll wait. He could wait 10 years. He could wait two years. He could wait a few months. He could wait, you know, 20, 30 years just lying about so that he could devour you. Then you have to realize that, man, I'm in a battle. I'm in a war right now. You know? I mean, there's real physical war going on in Ukraine and, you know, with Russia. But in spiritual world, right, I'm in a war. I'm constantly in a war where, you know, if I'm not sober and vigilant, you know, devil's going to attack. Right. Devil's continually attacking right now, whether you know it or not, right? Even at this moment, you know, some of you can't concentrate. Why? Because devil's attacking you, right? Devil knows where your heart is. If my heart is not, you know, on Lord Jesus Christ, and whatever comes my way, it's going to be distraction. And I'm going to be swayed by those distractions. Even as I'm preaching, and if I try to preach my own message, and, you know, because of my pride, and because, you know, I want to show off, then there's going to be no power, and the Lord's not going to use it. And that's what devil wants, too. You know, that's why preachers have to always be careful and preach with humble heart, right, with humility. But as people who's listening to messages, right, whether it's Bible study, whether it's preaching, when your heart is not, you know, fixated on Lord Jesus Christ, when your heart is not, you know, your goal is to, you know, be sanctified by preaching and the Word of God, and you're just sitting there to take up space, you know, don't be surprised, right? The devil is smiling at you right now. The devil's like, yeah, you know, I hate, that, I hate the fact that you're here, you know, sitting down and listening in a Bible-believing local church. I hate it. I hate you in the first place because you're going to heaven, and my eternal destination is hell. But you know what? Don't go any further. Don't go any further. I'm going to fill your thoughts with a bunch of all the worldly thoughts, right? Things that you like to think about, right? Maybe movie, celebrity, music, you know, certain people, you know, anything other than the Word of God and God's message. And you know what? You know, if you do that, then that's fine, right? It's almost like, you know, glass with, you know, just broken bottom. You're just sitting there and nothing's going through your head. You know? I mean, the thing is, Unlike many of the churches out there, you know, whether it's charismatic, whether it's you know, all these cults out there, you know, our position is not where we want you to stay in church for the sake of filling the seats. You know, I mean, devil might give you that you know sense of pride in yourself. I'm here, and they better thank me that I'm here, right? I'm here. And, you know, I'm sitting at certain places, so people better, you know, think that I'm special. I mean, that's what the devil wants you to think, you know. It's a blessing that you're here, right? But it's for your own good. It's not for anybody else's good, you know. The devil will try to make you think that, you know, in this war, in this spiritual battle, you know, you are it, right? 
You are the superstar. You are that sniper, right, who gets all the glory. And then once you get that pride and when, you know, what happens is that when people start listening to message, they think that, ah, that, that message for that sister, you know, that message is for that brother. Man, I hated that brother. I hated that sister. Their attitude and everything. Man, man, this one, you know, maybe they need to humble themselves, right? Then you know that devil's gotten a hold of you. Once you start comparing your faith with other people's faith, right, then devil got a hold of you. And devil's like, okay, now let's see. What are they doing wrong, right? When you compare yourself with somebody else, you always look for some faults of the other person, right? When devil wants to eat, you know, when those lions wants to eat, you know, their prey, they look at weaklings, right? Weak spots, you know? They look for, you know, little calves, right? You know, young ones, right? Not the strong ones. And even the strong ones, if they hurt their legs, right? There's no mercy for those predators. Now, have you ever seen, you know, those predators just walk by, you know, this nice meal because they're hurt, right? They're like, oh, I'm sorry, you know. I'm sorry, dear, right? Caribou, you know, you're hurt today, so I'm not going to eat you, right? Even though, you know, I have to feed, you know, pack up, you know, 12 other, you know, lions, right? And, and uh, no, they're going to eat you alive. You know, they're going to eat you. Then when devil sees that weakness in you, he's going to jump on it, you know. He'll do anything he can. I mean, he got a permission, right, to take away property, children, health, and dignity of Job. And he was a perfect man. Don't you think that devil's going to try to get you? I mean, do you think you and I are better than Job? Obviously, we're not. Then you and I have to think, I'm in a war. I mean, this spiritual battle, then how am I going to win when this adversary, the devil, is just roaming around, always trying to eat me alive? Again, when we saw, you know, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, you have to be vigilant. You have to be watchful. You have to look out. You know, they, they said, you know, watchmen, you know, when there's battle, right, in the front line, 24-7. If they see any enemy movement, they have to alert the whole base. If watchmen does not do their job, what happens? Man, the whole base is screwed, you know. They might as well just say, you know, kill me right now. And as a Christian, you have to be watchful. And when, when I say you have to be watchful, first, you have to watch your heart. What comes out of your heart? And what, what's in your heart will eventually come out, Right? If you love, say, I don't know, for example, say you love drugs, right? You love it. You don't do it. You know, you don't do any particular drugs. But you always have interest in it, and you love it. And you know it's wrong, but you still love it because your flesh loves it. So you never thought you would ever, ever, ever do drugs, right? But since you had it in your heart, where you did not abstain from it completely, whether you did not have complete hatred for it, suddenly, you know, there's a environment, right? You visit a friend's home. You didn't know they do drugs, right? But they're smoking weed. And then they go, hey, you know, why don't you try, right? It's not going to hurt you. It's going to just make you feel good. And you're like, no, 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 I'm a Christian. I'm not going to do it. You know, what should you have done first place, right? You know, you should just leave that place in the first place. But no, you know, he's my friend, so I'm going to stay. She's my friend, I'm going to stay. And then they're doing it. And all you're doing is just sitting there, you know, having conversation. And they're continuing to tempt you. Hey, just do it, just do it, right? You know, just put it in your mouth, right? You know, it's not going to hurt you. It's only going to make you feel good. And eventually, with peer pressure, you know, you commit the thing that you thought you'd never ever do. Right. And don't think that that's, you know, 
someone else's story. I mean, that's something that could happen in your life or that has happened in your life. Why? Because you haven't been watchful. You're not on the lookout, right? You know, can you imagine you're out in jungle or you're in Africa, you know, prairie, and you're one of those caribous and you're just migrating and you don't watch for any predators, right? You don't care about crocodiles, right? You don't care about, you know, lions, you know, you don't care. You think everything's okay. So you're not on the lookout, you know, and then you're just roaming, roaming, and suddenly, you know, big, large crocodile just pops out of the water and just grabs your neck, and then you're done, right? I mean, as Christians, too many times, Christians fall. Why? Because they're not watchful. You know, they don't look, they don't look around, right? They don't, they don't look at it. I mean, when the Lord has given you opportunity to get right or stay away from that area of sin, you still go. And that's the, you know, probably most disheartening part. And it's, a, it's sad, right? When you know that if I open that door and enter that door, you know, I'm going to commit sin. I'm going to let lion bite me, right? It could maul me, but because I'm not sober and because I'm not vigilant, well, I'm just going to go. You know, if you are sober and vigilant, you got to be really alert, right? You'll be an alert person. Why do you think drunk drivers, you know, get caused accidents? Because they're not sober and they're not vigilant. How many, you know, terrible stories have you heard where drunk drivers gets into the wrong way of the freeway, right? It happened like a few years ago over there by 60 freeway, you know, an area that we drive all the time coming to church if you're coming from, you know, Orange County area. And this guy came in the wrong way, you know, over by, you know, Chino Hills area and Diamond Bar area and hit a car head on. The person who was hit on they were decapitated. But the guy who hit the car was fine. I mean, can you, I mean, it's a lot of times those things happen, right? You know, those drunk drivers, they don't really die you know, for, for whatever reason, right? Maybe their body's so loose, you know, I mean, because they're the one who's, you know, hitting the other person, an unexpected person. But think about the car who was driving your right direction on a freeway and suddenly this car just pops out of nowhere, you know, coming through that exit, you know, entering that exit and boom and hits you. Right? And when you when you could think, you know, when, whenever something's moving at, you know, like 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, and then something coming at you and then you hit it on the spot, you know, it's gonna be a big explosion. When devil's trying to get you, right, when you're not vigilant and sober, right, you're, you're like that, you know, drunk driver, right? You're a driver under influence. Right? I mean, whether you like it or not, spiritually speaking, a lot of you are drunk with things of the world. When you love the world, you're entangled yourself, you know, with the things of the world. You know, when we read the text first, you know, entangling yourself with the world, right? That means you love the world. So you, you love the world, and you're entangled with the world, and you're drunk with the world. You're like, oh, man, that's such a harsh thing to say. Well, how, why is it harsh, right? You know, you're just loving all the things of the world, and you're just drinking and left and right, spiritually speaking. And if you are on the road, you'll be a very, very scary person to be next to. You're going to cause an accident. And many of you have caused accident in your spiritual life because you were not sober, because you were not vigilant, right? I mean, you're just driving, you know, and then you don't realize that you're getting more drunk, more drunk, right? You start losing focus on the road. You know, you're getting blurry vision, right? You know, and then now you're falling asleep. And before you know it, at that moment, 
you know, when you know you're going to get into accident, you become alert. But it's too late. And a lot of Christians, they become sober and vigilant when it's too late. And you don't want to be that, you know, person, right? I mean, maybe you've experienced it already, right? Where, you know, I maybe if, you know, I, I just were sober even just a, one minute before, you know, one day before, even one week before, one month before, one year before, then this wouldn't have happened. Right? That's why it is something that you and I have to be always, always, you know, be aware of. There's an old saying saying, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. You know, when there's a times of war, in order to keep the war, I mean, in order to keep the freedom, before, after, during war, nations have to be vigilant. Right? You have to be vigilant. You know? Especially if you're surrounded by many countries like Ukraine, per se. You know? America is blessed. You know, who do we have? We just have Canada and Mexico. Right? But think about Ukraine or those countries over there in Europe, even in Asia. Right? They have to be vigilant to keep their freedom. How vigilant are you to keep your spiritual freedom? Right? You're, you, you should have all the freedom in the world. You should be the joyous person in the whole world. Right? You accept that Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't have to worry about burning in hell. You have a local church to go to. You have the perfect word of God. Right? And maybe you even have, you know, you're blessed with you know, a loving family who's saved as well. Why aren't you enjoying those freedoms? Why are you so entangled with the things of the world? You know, when you're entangled with things of the world, when you love the world, when you start loving the world, you know what happens? You're, you choke out fruits of the Holy Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit, right? And there's no more love, there's no more joy. Forget about long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, right? That's why some of you guys are such an angry person and bitter person. Because you love the world so much, you know, your focus is away from Lord Jesus Christ. And you're not vigilant and sober anymore. So you'll be missing a lot of things of the, you know, first fruit of the Holy Ghost, right? When you first feel that, man, why don't... I love you know, my brethren like I used to, then you have to check your heart. Have I been sober? Have I been vigilant? Right? Am I loving the world more than anything else? Most likely it is. Right? What is the love? Love of the world. Right? I mean, anything that's controlled by Satan, you love it, then you love the world. Satan is the what, God of this world. So if you love you know, TV more than anything, forget it. Right? If you love yourself more than anything, social media or whatnot more than anything, forget it. Right? You know? And people-wise, too. Right? I mean, your favorite people are you know, unsafe people. Man, then there's going to be issues, right? You know, when the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If you are born into it, and if you happen to you know, marry before you got saved, hey, that's a different circumstance, right? You didn't have choice. However, if you had choice after you got saved and you make those wrong decisions, don't ever blame God for it, for your situation. Blame yourself. Right? Can you imagine you're in a war? You keep on complaining. You're complaining to, you know, higher ups. You know, hey, captain, hey, lieutenant, you know, hey, general, man, you put me in this place. I hate you. I hate you. No. Uh, can they just de-enlist, right? Can they just leave? Yeah, you get arrested, right? I mean, you'll be in dishonorable charge. But normal folks will be like, okay, I'm going to stay, but I, you know, I'm not going to enjoy my time, right? But majority of the people... Because their heart is what? First, patriotism, right? They're doing this for a cause. They love the country, 
and they love the freedom. They love democracy. So they do it out of their heart. I mean, when Ukraine asked for volunteers, you know, thousands of volunteers flew to Ukraine you know, to serve in their military. Why? Not because you know, they want to show off or anything, because they want to be part of something you know, where they could show their love for the freedom of the world, right? Democracy against communism and dictatorship. Then, when you look at your heart, in order to be a successful soldier, in order to work together successfully, you have to have a same goal, right? What is your goal in your life? That is a question that every Christian should ask. You should ask yourself, why are you here? Why do you live? What's the goal in your life? Is your goal to make more money? Is your goal to become healthier? Is your goal to make a lot of friends? Is your goal to get married? Is your goal to get, have a lot of fun? Is your ultimate goal, you know, what is it? What is your goal in your life? In military, they have one goal, right? They serve their country. That's their goal, and keep the freedom. In Christian army, your goal should be to follow Jesus Christ, no matter what. And this day, right, last days, your goal should be to do what? And preach the gospel. That should be your goal. I mean, your goal is not to, you know, build a house. It's your goal is not to go get the best car, right? Your goal is not to, you know, do this and do that. Your goal should be what? Follow Jesus Christ and preach his word. That should be your goal in your life. And you have to preach the right gospel, right? Some people get the first part right, but they don't get the second part. You have to preach the right gospel of Jesus Christ, right? And that should be your goal. Then you don't come to church for your own good and for your own profit, right? You come to church because you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, there's a big difference. Because some of you guys come to church just for your own profit. You know, some people want to meet other brethren. I mean, fellowship isn't wrong, but well, it's not your number one goal. Right? Some people want to teach because they like to teach, but it's not your goal. I mean, some people come to church to preach. It's not your ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal should be to what? To serve Lord Jesus Christ and in any capacity that you can. Right? Well, then, whether you're a teacher, you're cleaning the bathroom, or you're serving food, you know, you're doing whatever it is from A to Z, then you'll do it from your bottom of your heart. Why? Because you are not in the army for your own profit in this spiritual battle, in this war, but you are here to serve your master, Lord Jesus Christ, and you want to preach his word, the right gospel. And when, when you meet veterans, man, God bless them, right? And they always, whether they are in their 90s, even 100, or they're the young, young bucks, right? Whether they're 18, 20, whenever they talk about serving the country, right? They have that special zeal. There's like, you know, like a like star sparking, right? You know, they could talk about uh, some parts of their life, and it's like miserable, right? Because, you know, not the country and like a lot of people don't treat them well, right? They don't have the best benefits when they should have the best benefits, right? They should have the best care, you know, mental care or anything. They should have it. They should have the best because they're risking their life to serve the country. And through all of that, when they talk about, you know, serving in Korean War, you know, right? Even all the way back to World Wars, right? Even more recent wars, right? Afghanistan or even, you know, Iraq War and everything, right? Kuwait all the way back. You know, they're, they have that zeal. They're so proud to have served the country, right? They might not like certain administrations, but the one goal is that, you know what? I did it, you know, 
ultimately to serve my country and the freedom of the world. But as a Christian, you know, sometimes, you know, it's embarrassing to even come near to that level of conviction. Do you come even, even like halfway to that kind of patriotism that people have when you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you, do you get, I mean, does your face light up, right? Whenever you talk about Lord Jesus Christ and his word, do you sacrifice yourself, right? Your materials, your time, even your health and everything for Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, do you? When our ultimate goal is same, serving our master, preaching his word, then what's going to happen? Our army will be humming, it's streamlined, you know? It will be serving beautifully, right? In order to get to that point, you first, not someone next to you, not someone behind you, you yourself first have to check your heart, examine your heart, judge your heart. What have I been living for in my life? I mean, it's a good reminder because things of the world always gets you busy and do other things, right? If you're too busy to read the Word of God, you're too busy. If you're too busy to preach the Word of God, you're too busy. You're too busy to witness, you're too busy. You're too busy to pray, you're too busy. You're entangled with the things of the world. Which means then something's not right in your life. Then be vigilant. Watch everything. You know, list everything. Think about everything that's going on in your life. Are they for Lord Jesus Christ or are they for the devil? Am I doing this for my own benefit or am I doing this for Lord's benefit, right? Am I becoming more proud doing this or am I becoming more humble and thankful, right? If something causes you to be more proud, right, and and it's going to make you become proud, you might as well stop from doing it. I mean, for example, you, you somehow you get into gambling, you know, and then you go, you go to Las Vegas or one of these Indian casinos, right? And for the sake of it, you, don't, you, you shouldn't do it in the play, first place. You're like, ah, there's a quarter. Let me just put it in a slot machine, right? And then you pull it down, and what do you know? You win some money, right? You might even hit a jackpot, right? You know, they call it, quote, unquote, beginner's luck, right? You know, why is it that when someone who's never done it tries it and then, you know, they somehow, like, win a lot of stuff. And then suddenly you're hooked on it. And then it's going to destroy you. You're like, ah, you know, here's 10000 I'm giving to church. Don't tell me where I got it, right? Wow, it's like, you give, like, 25000 Like, ah, don't tell me where I got it. Right? And then you become so proud when you know that the source is devil's source. Right? You know, Bob Jones Sr. said it is never right to do wrong. It is never right to do right. In order, it is never right to do wrong in order to do right. Right? God already has everything. God is God of the universe. Lord Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe. I mean, can you realize that? The captain of your army created the whole universe. We're not talking about Buddha. We're not talking about, you know, Muhammad or popes out there. We're talking about Lord Jesus Christ, creator of the universe. He's your captain. He saved you from hell. And he's your leader in your life. And he's your master. I mean, think about it. You have that... You know, Almighty God, who is personable to you, but you would rather follow someone else? Man, you know, when, when you're just by yourself thinking about it, man, then I'm a fool. Why would I not follow the best thing ever happened? Ever, ever in this world. Why, why would I not? And I neglect it and I just go to the worst thing. That's ever happened, you know, which is the devil, right? right? But as Christians, you make that mistake every single day, 
I mean, if not every single day, almost every day, right? When I'm here serving my Lord with same purpose in the army of Christ, why am I start serving the enemy? The last thing you want to be is that you become that spy, right? In any war, there are spies. There are spies everywhere. In order to win the war, one of the best ways to know what the enemy will do, right? That's why in any war, in any country, you always send out spies, right, to get more information. And, you know, whether you like it or not, you know, during the passage of, you know, any local bible believing church, there are going to be spies, right? There are going to be people who come to church for a wrong purpose, right, to destroy the bible believing church. But by grace of God and by, you know, his protection, the Lord protects his church. And you don't want to be that kind of person who hates spies, right? Man. I do not want to, because I wasn't sober, because I wasn't vigilant, because I wasn't awake, and I don't want to be that person who aided the spy, the devil's folks, to bring defeat to the country. Man, can you imagine? Like, you're in a Ukraine army, and then you got drunk with a, someone, spy from Russia, and you told them all the plans. You know, tomorrow we're going to go to this area and we're going to, you know, attack this area, this area. You know, we're going to snipe, you know, this leader and everything. And then, you know, our secret, you know, base is over there, you know. And then when people are drunk, they say dumb stuff and they always reveal, you know, their secrets or whatnot, what's deep in their heart. That's why when you're spiritually drunk, you know, with sins of this world, what happens? Man. When you start hearing these false doctrines, when you start meeting these people who's against the word of God, and when you start dealing with people who preach against, you know, King James, who preach against, uh, you know, all the right doctrines, right, in the word of God, and you start aiding them, and you start working as a spy with them, and suddenly you start breaking, you start, you know, making other people's faith Right? Faith, right? You know, unsure. I mean, this young man's like, you know what? I thought one save always save. But this guy is telling me that, you know, you have to, you know, do good works to go to heaven, right? You have to give a lot of money to church to go to heaven. Oh, man, I'm not sure anymore, right? And then suddenly, you know, there's like a division amongst the church, grumbling. And then suddenly they start complaining against the pastor and teachers like, oh, you know, uh, so-and-so from this YouTube channel, you know, from far away, you know, like, oh, you know, their doctrines, right? When they're completely false and the rumors start, right? You know, what better way to destroy, you know, someone's character than starting a bad rumor, right? Right, you know, like, you know, some, some girl comes in and then start talking to this young girl. Yeah, you know that teacher over there? Wow, you know. You know, she done some bad things, you know. And then these girls start telling their parents, right? Oh, mommy, you know what I heard? You know, I heard from this person that blah, blah, blah. And then mommy start talking, you know, and the daddy start talking, and the whole church is talking, and they ostracize some person for no good reason. But don't forget, right? You reap what you sow. God will judge you for it, whether you're saved or not. You know, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow it, thou shall he also reap. Right? Galatians chapter 6. So you don't want to be part of it. Right? You just don't want to be that part of that section because it is, there's always that section who wants to destroy the church, who always has complaints because you don't have the same goal. If you don't have one mind and one goal to serve in a Bible-believing church, then don't come. It's good for you, it's good for me, it's good for everybody. It's good for the body of Christ. Because you being here trying to destroy the church will make you go down, will make others go down, and it will make a scar that will never erase. Then if you don't want to be that person where, you know what? Man, I, you know, after preaching, checking my heart during preaching, man, you know, I don't think I had the same goals coming to church. 
Maybe I want to profit for myself, right? You know, I just came to church to feel good, you know. I came to church, you know, to show up to other people. I came to church, you know, just to socialize when my goal should have been what? I came to church to serve the Lord. I came to church to preach the word. I came to church to learn more about the word so that I could go out there and preach more word. If you're not going to change, man, brother, sister, you know, it's, it may be better. I mean, I, I know. It's hard things to swallow. It might be better. If you're not going to change, you know, just don't, don't go to Bible building church and try to, you know, bring your, you know, drunkenness to the church if you're not going to change, right? And then you will at least avoid more punishment from God, right? You will avoid more, you know, all the trials in your life, right? And you will at least less pollute and contaminate other brothers and sisters in Christ. When you think about it, these young ones and the newer Christians, you know, they're very easy to sway. Man, they just got saved. Then are you going to talk to them about, you know, hey, you know, the, this teaching about, Salvation by, you know, no works, I don't think it's true, man. I came from a background, you know, where you have to speak in tongues, you have to pray and see Jesus Christ in your dreams, right? And then you have to, you know, say holy, holy, moly all the time. And then you have to say Lord's Prayer, you know, all the time before you go to sleep, you know, Apostles' Creed and all that stuff, you know. And then you're going to pollute that person. And we have many cases throughout our, you know, local church history where young believers show up for a couple weeks, and they disappear. Why? They were polluted. And a few weeks later, the culprit disappeared too. Culprit should have been disappeared by themselves, but you know what? They polluted the other people, and then they left together. And what happened to that person's faith who was you know, polluted? A lot of times, they could never come back. You know, it doesn't happen like that. That's why you have to really check your heart today. What is my goal? I am enlisted in the army of Christ when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. There, we're all one body in Christ. Do I serve in the army of Christ to serve my master, Captain Lord Jesus Christ, creator of the universe? Am I serving to preach his word? Or am I in any form and in any way trying to profit myself? Amen. You do not want to profit yourself to come to church in any way for your own profit. If you put Lord first and if you put his word first, the rest of them will all work out, right? You're like, you know what? You know, I've been single all my life. You know, I had some bad relationship. I'm just going to go to a bible living church and look for a, you know, you know, sweet, you know, lady and, you know, good man, right? They're Bible believers, right? With that purpose, it's not going to work. No, it's not. However, if you come and serving the Lord and then you pray to the Lord, Lord, you know, I do want to meet a Bible-believing mate, right? Then look for open doors like that way, or vice versa. You should have been coming to church. You know what? These Christian brothers, you know, they're, they're very faithful and they're trusting. You know what? So I'm going to share my business plans with them, right? Like, okay. You know what? I'm going to start a business, people, you know? And then, of course, some of them are very gullible. Some of them are very trusting. Oh, here's my money for investment. Here's my money for investment. And what do you know? They just disappear. <laughs> Week later, month later, after they get everything. That was their purpose. But, I mean... Don't worry, you know, God, God will make them pay for what they've done. But you yourself, you got involved. Why? Because maybe your purpose was not to serve the Lord in the first place. Maybe your purpose was to get to know more people. Your purpose was to get to be more popular. Your purpose was get to, you know, get married. Your purpose was get to, like, you know, increase your business, right? You know, prosperity, gospels everywhere, right? They're Joel, Wallace, Joel Austin, T.D. Jakes. I mean, they're everywhere, right? You shouldn't bring that junk to here in a Bible-believing church. Right. If you want to do business, I'll, I'll write your address, right? There are a lot of mega churches out there. Go over there and meet a lot of people. Pass your business cards out. But don't do that here. I mean, this is a church, local church, bought by precious blood of Jesus Christ. 
And Lord wants to protect this church. And you'll be blessed, I'm telling you, spiritually, even anything else, more than anything else, when you serve the Lord you know, from the bottom of your heart with no other ulterior motives. Shouldn't I, shouldn't you just get rid of all those motives now? Ulterior motives, man? No. When you purely serve the Lord, just one purpose, right? Thanking Him because He saved you from hell and you want to preach His word, man, your life's going to change. You got to be sober. You got to be vigilant, right? You, you're, you, you not only are going to save yourself from a lot of troubles, you're going to save your husband, your wife, your loved ones from many troubles. Man, in an army, not everybody has the same skill set. You have someone super talented. You have someone who's not as talented. But army work as a team. They, they're part of like a one body. I mean, that's why it's such a great, great, great example, right? Body of Christ, you know, in the army, right? No matter what you do, maybe someone, your job is to put artillery in machines. Maybe you don't get the glory like someone who shoots it, but without you, the person can shoot it, right? Maybe you're the person who shines the boots or cleans up the boots, right? If, 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 think about it, if a personnel do not have you know, right footwear, what's going to happen, especially you know, out in the battle? You, you, you might lose your feet, right? You know, gangrenes, you know, right? All those sores out there. And you could be that sniper, you could be the shooter, but it doesn't matter. In the eyes of the Lord, every single believer, every person enlisted in his army is precious in the sight of the Lord. So whatever you do, and however amount of capability you have, do it heartily as unto the Lord. And you're going to be blessed. Then, as a church, as an army in Christ, right? We could achieve the goal together. I think it will be always sad at the judgment seat of Christ, you know, or, you know, you see someone who you've went to church for a long time, served the Lord together, you know, like majority of the people are just getting rewards, you know, the Lord's like congratulating them, commanding them. But, you know, a few people are over there, you know, the Lord's lecturing them, you know. Why? Because their purpose was not to serve the Lord. Their purpose was to fulfill their own motives. Let's not be that, right? You and I, Lord has given us great blessing and privilege and opportunity to serve him in his army. And when you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, whether you like it or not, you're already enlisted, right? If you're already in the army of Christ, Shouldn't you want, don't you want to serve him like the exemplary soldier that you ought to be? It's up to you. It's not up to me. It's not up to someone next to you. It's not up to your mom and dad. It's not up to your loved one, you know, children. No, it's up to you. It's up to you to make that choice. Am I going to get rid of my own selfish motives and prophets and solely, solely serve the Lord with all of my heart with one purpose, preaching the word. Let's pray. Dear Father, as this world is going more turbulent with more unpredictable things happening, but it was predictable in the word of God in, during this end times, Lord, help us realize that we're in the army, Lord. We're in your army, Lord. We're in this spiritual battle. We're in a war. Help us to be sober and vigilant. Help us not to be just entangled this, with this world and loving things of the world and choking the things of the Holy Ghost, Lord. But help us to wake up. Help us to get right with you. And help us to serve you with one purpose and one mind, Lord, in unity as body of Christ. To preach your word. And no matter what the sacrifice needs to be, do it for you, Lord. I pray that you'll be everyone here and who's listening who weren't able to make it for whatever reason. 
you know, be with every one of us, Lord God, until, you know, we meet again. You know, let your grace and mercy be upon us and bless the rest of the service today as well. And even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.